Glory be to God Almighty. You're welcome in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, who died for us on the cross of Calvary. I am Brother Osana David. Welcome to the Narrow Ways Christ for All Nations. We are considering the topic, the terrible day of the Lord today. Let us pray. Lord, we have limited knowledge, but you are the fountain of all wisdom. We cast all our ignorance upon you, asking that you take away our senses according to human standard and fill us with your spirit that gives inspiration. We direct our hearts to focus on the things of heaven. Help us to see the way you see. Help us to understand the way you understand so that we can be able to follow you. Take away our worldly wisdom. Take away our worldly senses and fill us with heavenly senses. We know that the race, the battle is not for the swift. It is not for the strong. It is of God that you had mercy. Lord, we ask today that your spirit will illuminate our hearts, drive us towards righteousness, take away our ignorance, and help us to hear from you. Lord, speak through me, an ordinary vessel. I have nothing of mine to offer. You know, if you are subtracted from a life, nothing absolutely nothing will be left lord therefore i ask that you speak through me to your children speak to me also that having preached to others I myself will not end up being a castaway help us O lord in jesus christ's name amen if you are new to this channel or if you haven't subscribed please subscribe to this channel the narrowest Christ for all nations and visit our website tnwcfen.org. Today we want to talk about the terrible day of the Lord. This is one of the topics that a lot of people don't actually want to listen to. I remember a few weeks ago I posted the revelation online when I talk about the spirit of death that has been released upon the nations of the world. Someone just quickly commented in the video and said, oh, you started false prophets. So I looked at where he's from. He's from Wari, where I pastored for 10 years. So I said, let me see if I can get his contact. I got his contact and I called him up. I said, I, I, I never, I've never heard anybody calling me a false prophet. I've been doing online ministry for since 2015 and I've given out a lot of revelations the Lord gave to me. So I called him up for the fact that he is from the same city, Wari, where I pastored. I called him up and I asked him, uh, did you watch the video? He said, no, he didn't even watch the video. <laughs> you did not watch the video. He said he just saw, uh, he said he hates anything negative, he hates anything about death. So he just saw the topic. He saw the description of the video and decided to comment it. He said he did not even have the data to watch videos. So he was watching it on a data saving mode. He was Facebooking on data saving mode. So he, he cannot even open picture, neither can he watch videos. But he commented. Why? Because he hates anything negative. And he's a Christian, so I took my time. I talked to him. He even requested that I send him uh, a revelation that I referred to. Because he was saying, when did it happen? If it is happening now, when did you get the message? So I sent him so that he can verify for himself. A lot of people hate the truth. A lot of people don't want to hear anything about death because they feel that death is something that is very, very bad. Why some of us see death as a passage to the other side of life where everything is beautiful, where 
death and hell will be no more where there will be no night where there will be no day but everything will be beautiful so it depends on the perspective you are seeing it from today is a day that we are being reminded of the terrible day of the lord it is a day that both cripples and those who have two legs those who have two hands those who never heard before and those who heard are going to stand before the presence of the lord to give account it is going to be a day that will be singular a day that no other day is going to resemble it is going to be a very terrible day if the bible calls it a terrible day let us know that that day is going to be very very terrible and we need to continue to remind ourselves of this day last week sunday precisely i was to preach and the lord spoke to me the holy spirit revealed to me what i needed to talk about he told me to preach about the judgment day i should talk about the judgment of the lord but he gave me a message which i delivered it is message to lukewarm christians unbelievers believers who are possessed so i gave that message today we need to look at the judgment day the terrible day of the lord you may not have heard anything like this before but i want to tell you that whether you want to hear it or not this day will definitely come it is coming and it is coming with full force it is a day that no man can avoid it is coming and we can avoid it we just need to get ourselves ready get yourself prepared because the day is coming the very things we are running after are going to be like dung in our very eyes they are going to be like nonsense in our eyes because it is then we are going to understand that the some of the things we neglect are actually the things that God values imagine someone being in a school for 6 years and you are expected to go home with your certificate and you are going home without your certificate how do you feel it's going to look like and that's exactly what many people are doing in this world they are in this world they have everything it takes to live a good life and go home with a good report instead of them to focus on the assignment they are into this world to do they focus on the on on the endowment the properties the equipment given to them to fulfill the assignment instead of focusing on the assignment they are focusing on what they have been given to enable them fulfill the assignment in this world this is nothing the deception of the highest order the god of mammon has become the god a lot of people are worshiping instead of worshiping the god that gives money some people worship their bodies some people worship their leaders some worship their elders some worship their wives their husbands some even worship in fact majority today worship their prophets their pastors instead of the pastor helping them to make heaven or direct them to God they direct them to themselves and they end up worshiping him let's look at the text for today we're going to read a couple of passages today Joel chapter 2 Joel 2 10 and 11 the earth shall shake before them the heavens shall tremble the sun and the moon shall be dark and the stars shall withdraw their shining this is about the terribility of the lord And the Lord shall utter his voice before his army for his camp is very great for he is strong that executed this word for the day of the Lord is great and very terrible and who can abide it the day of the Lord is great and terrible who can stand it it is going to be very very terrible humans in this world But they have a pistol in their pockets 
and they have drugs. After hiring themselves, they think they are on top of the world. They think they are everything in this world. And some ladies too, after wearing some sexy clothes and wear high heels and wear eyelash, wear Brazilian hair or India temple hair, they walk as if they are on top of the world. But let me remind you again. The day of the Lord is great, very terrible. Who can abide it? Who can be able to stand in that day? Today, people have achieved so much. Imagine someone like Elon Musk, the richest man, very creative, a great scientist, one of the first of his kind. In the history of humanity, just look at Chat GBT that he made a lot of contribute, contribution to. Imagine someone like that going home and his soul is weeping. My mom was just telling me about an old woman who lived close to a hundred years that before she died, she was always crying. She was always crying. And the children would ask her, Mama, why are you crying? You're always crying. But this is someone I gave a message to from the Lord about uh, over 10 years ago. Or there about 10 years ago. I, yes, it should be over 10 years ago. I met her and I told her that the Lord said you should prepare for eternity. She did not prepare at all. I know. She did not prepare. And at the time of her death, she was always crying. It is time. It was time to meet a Savior. It was time to give account. Instead of even confessing and asking the Lord for forgiveness, she was crying. Probably, she was already feeling the heat of hell. She was already having a sensation of the judgment of God instead of using the last opportunity. Like the former criminal, he wasn't a criminal. He isn't a criminal today. A former criminal, a former armed robber because he repented. He was crucified with Jesus Christ and he was on the right hand side of Jesus Christ. He has the Lord for mercy and God forgive him. Jesus told him today, not tomorrow, today you will be with me in paradise. Instead of behaving like that man and taking a bold step and repent for the remaining days of her life, she never did. She was crying. Today, she is dead. Joel 2, 30-32 and I will show wonders in the heavens and in the earth, blood and fire and pillars of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into light before the great and terrible day of the Lord come. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered. For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem shall be deliverance, as the Lord had said, and in the remnant whom the Lord shall call. Time is coming when there shall be signs in the heaven above. A time is coming when even the, the heavenly bodies themselves shall know that the owner is coming and they will refuse to give their light. A time is coming when there shall be wonders in the heaven and in the earth. The sun shall be afraid. And it shall not give light. Instead of giving light, it is going to produce darkness for the first time. Time is coming that the moon is going to turn into blood. Because the powers of heaven shall all be shaken. And the stars shall fall. Whether the real stars or angels, the stars shall fall. I tell you the truth. 
A lot will happen, and the devil who deceives those in the world today shall know that the owner is here. Why am I preaching this message? Am I trying to tell you that I am righteous than you are? And warning you and not warning myself? No, that's not what I'm doing today. I'm simply obeying God. Do you know I'm also talking to myself? I'm talking to myself first before every single one of you. Because the fact that I'm a preacher, the fact that God reveals things to me once in a while, does not mean that I don't have my own account to give. Paul said, I beat my body and bring it under subjection, lest when I have preached to others, I myself should become a castaway. So the preacher, even no matter how much grace you have, no matter how much God uses you, everybody will stand before the presence of the Lord and shall give account. Fortunately, a lot of preachers today don't even think about the judgment of God. I know. A lot of them, they don't think about the judgment of God. They think that God is merciful and, they, and that the mercy of God endures forever. Yes, that's fine. But blessed are they. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. If you are living in this world and you, ref, you refuse the mercy of God by repenting, if you refuse to be merciful to your own self by turning away from evil, Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Only the merciful shall obtain mercy. If you do not show mercy to yourself by escaping the wrath of God, by doing good today, by accepting the free gift of salvation and staying away from sin, I tell you the truth. The mercy that you anchor your hope on is going to fail you on that very day. The mercy of God is for those who deserve, those who deserve His mercy, not for those who trample upon the grace of God. Why is this judgment coming? Why is this terrible day of the Lord coming? It is coming because something happened some time ago. It is coming because God prepared a place for Satan himself. Who rebelled against God? There was war in heaven. And Lucifer rebelled against God. And they fought against the angels of the Lord. And they were driven down to the earth. Some of us don't even know that a battle began. A battle actually started before we were all born. There was a battle in heaven. Now let me read Revelation chapter 12, 7 to 12. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. So there was a time that there was war in heaven. It was a very terrible war in heaven. I mean in the heaven that God dwelt. There was war there. There was war in heaven. And this war was between the angels of God and the angels of the devil. And it was a very terrible war. Let's read on. And the dragon the dragon also referred to as the devil. The dragon fought and his angels. So not just the dragon, but his angels. He was able to deceive one third of the stars of heaven, one third of the angels of God in heaven. He was able to deceive them and prevent not. Neither was their place found anymore. In heaven, and the great dragon was cast out, the old that old serpent called the devil and Satan. You see his names, which deceived the whole world. He deceived the whole world. The whole world. Are you among the whole? Are you among? If you are among, this is the time to call yourself to order. 
as I have called myself to order and continue to remind myself. He was cast out into the earth and his angels were cast out with him. So it wasn't just him alone, but him and his angels, they were cast out with him. Where is he? What is the address of Satan according to the Bible? It is this world. Let's continue. Verses 10, 11, and 12. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. And they overcame him by the blood of a lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they loved not, and they loved not their lives unto the death. Therefore, pay attention to verse 11. Therefore, rejoice, ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe to it, the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. Why? For the devil is come down unto you, having great wrath. He's angry that he lost his position and he wasn't given a second chance. Because he knew, he knew that he had but a short time. Let me tell you one thing. It is about 6,000 years that this earth was created. But do you know that despite these thousands of years that the earth, the world was created, Satan is saying that it has a short time. Satan does not use our 24 hours a day. He, he was created to be an eternal being. Satan wasn't created to have the normal night and day that we have. He was created to live forever. He was one of the cherub. One of the cherubim. He was a very high-ranking angel. Like the rank of a Jamaican and a Jagabra. He was a covering angel. But pride came into his heart in heaven. He rebelled against God. And he was cast down. Some of you may ask, when was he cast down? Do you know that the battle we are fighting in this world actually started before we were born? We are only here to take sides. You only take either the, take side with God or you take side with the devil. That is it. We are only here. We were brought into this world to take sides. I want to tell you that, brothers and sisters, choose ye this day whom you will serve. If you want to serve God, serve God. Because a terrible day is coming. A day is coming when every one of us will give account. Now let me tell you something. This is the very words of Jesus. Then this is uh, Matthew chapter 25 verse 41. Then shall he say also unto them on the left, on the left hand, depart from me. Ye cast into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. I have not seen anything that can bring everlasting sorrow more than this. This will be the last word that some people are going to hear from the Lord. And I want to tell you that hell was never prepared for man. This Matthew 25 41 says that it was prepared for the devil and his fallen angels. Not for you, Hosanna, not for you, David, not for you, Matthew, not for you, Matthew, not for you, Charles. It wasn't prepared for you. It was prepared for the devil and his angels for rebelling for all the evil they did against God. Heaven is a holy place. 
war, the first place war actually existed was not in this world. It was in heaven. They were not afraid to fight in the presence of God. They wanted to overthrow God. He wanted to be like the Most High. Just as a lot of people want to be like the Most High today. They want to be like the Most High. They want to be in charge of their lives. They want to detect how their lives should run, what they must obey, and what they must not obey. They are in charge of their lives, not the Holy Spirit. They want to be in charge. They want to be like the Most High. They are in charge. They are their own God. They have no other God but themselves. There is a satanic quote, which is a satanic commandment. Instead of, that will be done, O God. Their own, instead of, that will be done on earth. Theirs is, do it as thou wilt, and that shall be the whole of the law. Do it as thou wilt, and thou shall be, and that shall be the whole of the law. Do it as thou wilt. Do it your own will. And that is the whole of the law. It is satanism. So if you have I've read a couple of uh, chapters of the satanic Bible, the Lavian satanic Bible, I've read a, a lot. I've not finished it, but I've read a lot of it. And when I went through and I did research on satanism, and I watched a lot of videos, a lot of interviews of satanists and former satanists, and I looked at the world, I told myself that this world is more satanic than being godly. The world is more satanic than godly. That's the truth. Because anytime people worship their own will, they follow Satan. Because Satanism, especially Lavean Satanism, I mean I mean when I say Lavean Satanism, the uh, the the uh, I, I'm referring to the satanic uh, uh, denomination of that was founded by Anthony Lavey. His type of satanism, which a lot of people practice, even among many of those who say they are Christians, who profess to be Christians, it is about the human will. Do it as thou wilt. The way you want to do it, provided it shouldn't hurt your neighbor. But if it even hurts your neighbor and it is unavoidable, you go ahead and do it. That's satanism. That's sadly a lot of people do today. It is my body and I do it the way I want. <laughs> the Bible says that the body is for the Lord. It is not for sexual immorality and the Lord for the body. So if that destroys the temple of God, that same person, God himself, will destroy. So you can say, it's my body, I, my body, my choice. I tell you the truth. On earth, it is your choice. But when your soul leaves the body, you will lose your willpower. It is, it, then it is going to be, the soul is going to obey the owner. Today, your soul obeys your flesh. Your soul obeys the dictates of your passions because you have subjected the will power of your soul to your own flesh, the power of your flesh, the passions of your flesh. But a time is coming when the body is disintegrated, disintegrated from your soul. That time, your soul is going to obey nobody but the maker. A force shall pull you. And when you look back, you will see your body on the ground, or on the bed, or pieces on the road. And you will know that after creation, God, after molding man, God breathed his very life, the breath of life, into the nostril of man, and man became a living soul. Terrible day of the Lord is coming. Let us get ready. Let me tell you one thing. Satan would have been 
so powerless in deceiving the world if he hadn't had his own people in church. They are in their millions. They are in their millions. Many of them are prophets today. Many of them are pastors. Many of them are general overseers. Many of them are lecturers in theological schools. And they are propagating sons and daughters who will carry out the assignments and the agenda of the kingdom of darkness to deceive as many as they can. But I want to tell you that don't be a victim. If you are a victim, you may not even have the opportunity of blaming anybody. You will only cry and regret all your life. The day of the Lord is coming and it's going to be too terrible for those who did not obey the gospel. It is going to be very, very terrible. Let us look at Genesis chapter 1 verse 2. Many times we read this passage and a lot of times many people read it without understanding. But I pray that the Lord will give us understanding. I put some of these things in capital letters so that you can spot them out. There are some things that we need to notice here. This is about the beginning, but was it the beginning of the very beginning? No, this wasn't the beginning of the very beginning. A lot of things happened before this time, and that is exactly what I want to point out to us. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Yes, good, but it is more than this. Let me tell you something. We are told that God created everything in six days and he rested on the seventh day. That's the truth. But it is more than that. If you look at this passage very well, I'm talking about why I'm referring to this is why God is going to judge the devil, why the terrible day of the Lord is coming. God has treasured wrath for thousands of years and he wants to pour it out. He wants to pour it out on the children of disobedience. I mean, God wants to pour his wrath out on Satan and the fallen angels. And some people are volunteering to be part of this. But you know what? Come out of them, my people. Come out of her. You don't have that strength. Angels excel in might. You don't have that strength to withstand the terror of hellfire. You don't. Heaven is too beautiful for us to stay. But we have been given the grace. It has been purchased for us. So let us choose that option. A lot of people don't like me because uh, I tell people the truth and I want them the same way I want myself. Don't believe that in telling people about prosperity, about the love of God, about God's mercy, about God's blessings. Um, people will feel good and, uh, and forget about the judgment day. But can we actually over-prepare for that day? No, we can't over-prepare. The Lord Jesus Christ talked about hellfire more than every prophet in the Bible. There is nowhere you will see warnings about hell than in the gospel, in the gospel books. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. There is nowhere else in the Bible that talks about hell. Nobody ever warned people more about the judgment of God on the last day more than Jesus Christ. He warned people the dangers of hell. So if the one that sends me 
warned people. What do you expect me to do? Even when he was here, evil was not multiplied like this. Today, I feel very bad when I enter the society. Terrible things you see. You open the news, you see terrible things. I feel tormented a lot of times. A lot of times, the only way to actually relieve myself of some of the pains that accumulated in my heart because of the terrible things I see and hear is just to warn people, to warn people to stay away from evil and be saved on the last day. Let's look at this passage. And the earth was without form. This particular word we see here in Genesis chapter 1, verse 2, without form and void, is tohu bohu. Tohu bohu. It means it was formless and it was void. It was formless and it was void. It was empty. But was the earth actually empty when the Lord was creating? Did God create these things I want to mention now in Genesis chapter 1, chapters 1 and 2? He didn't create these things. Number one, did God create darkness? Darkness was already on earth. The Bible says that the dark, darkness was upon the face of the deep. So he did not create darkness. Number two, did he create water? No, there was water on the earth. When he wanted to create, there was already water on the earth. So he only separated the water. Then there was a foundation already. Now what I want to tell you is this. Whether you believe it or not, this is the truth to a very great extent if not the absolute truth. When there was war in heaven, before Adam and Eve were created, the, the world that existed then was destroyed. This is very evident with the water upon the face of the earth and darkness everywhere. So the Spirit of God came and moved upon the surface of the water and investigated the level of damage before God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God separated the light from the darkness. And he commanded some of the waters to move upward, which is a firmament, and some to remain. God, there was an existing earth that was destroyed because of the war between Lucifer, the dragon, Satan and the angels of God there was war in heaven and when Satan was thrown down he was thrown down to the earth that Adam and Eve was living because this happened some years ago before them Adam and Eve were created remember when there was corruption on earth God used flood which we call the flood of Noah and he said Never again will I use floods to destroy this earth. Because he did it during the war between Adam, between, the, between Lucifer and Angel Michael and the host of heaven. I am not saying it is 100%, but this is what I believe and wish a lot of scholars also believe. Because when you look at the Bible, you will see a lot of evidences pointing to this. One earth that was existing was destroyed and there was darkness upon the face of the deep. From the moment Satan rebelled against God, God decided that there will be judgment. There will be repercussion for the disobedience. And the repercussion is judgment. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. And the dragon fought and his angels. These were not angels created by Lucifer. These were God's angels. That he deceived. He deceived them. Look at verse 9. And the great dragon was cast out. That old serpent called Satan. He was cast down 
with his angels with him. In verse 4, and his tail, this is Revelation chapter 12, verse 4, and his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and it cast them to the earth. His tail. He, one thought of the angels of God, he cast them to the earth. He deceived one thought of God's angels. And for these angels to rebel, there are repercussions. This is why judgment must come. There is going to be the battle of Armageddon. All these fallen angels and Lucifer himself, they are going to gather and try to wage another war. But with the word of his mouth, with the sword from the mouth of the Lord, they are going to all destroyed. They are going to be destroyed. Every one of them. So don't think that you can live your life the way you want. In a battlefield, we have been all born into this battlefield. We need to make our choice. We have to choose this day who you want to serve. Who do you want to serve? Who do you want to follow? Who do you want to serve? Are you serious about your soul? Are you really serious? If you are serious, then back up your seriousness with repentance, with soberness. Follow the Lord. I don't follow the world. Because everything we see today will definitely go away. Now let's look at some scriptures about the day of the Lord. This is Jeremiah 30 verse 7. Alas, for the day of the Lord is great, so that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble. But he shall be saved out of it. Joel, Joel 2 2. A day of darkness and of luminous, a day of dark clouds and of thick darkness, as the morning spread upon the mountains. A great people and a strong people, they had not been ever the like, neither shall be, neither shall be any more after it, even to the years of many generations. The day of the Lord is terrible. It was it is described in the Bible as a terrible day. Those of you who think that you can appear before the day of the Lord with wickedness and sins in your life and escape, it is a life from the pit of hell. Except you bear the mark of the Lord, you will be among those who are going to lament on that day. You know what? The Bible says in Revelation chapter 1 verse 7 that all kindreds, kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. When the Lord is going to come, it is going to be very, very terrible. When they see him coming with a cloud of his glory and the host of heaven, every eye will see him immediately after the great tribulation. They will see. Even those who pierce him. Behold, he cometh with clouds. And every eye will see him. All king dress of the earth. Even those who pierce him. Everybody, every eye will see him. And instead of rejoicing, there will be great wailing. There will be great crying in the world. Why? Because of rebellion. Amos 5, 18 to 20. Woe unto you, woe unto you, out of your ignorance, that desired the day of the Lord. To what end is it to you? The day of the Lord is darkness and not light. Listen, man, that day is not light. I don't know how 
I can even convince the people of this world. I don't know. A lot of people are going to hell from church to hell. I don't know how to convince people anymore. We see all these terrible things happening. And a lot of people don't still want to take correction. Man, woman, wake up. A terrible day of the Lord is coming. How can I convince you that you need to give your life to Jesus Christ? How can I? What do you want? What else do you want? Do you want Jesus to appear to you first? What are you looking for before you give your life to Jesus Christ or before you get serious with your life? What exactly are you looking for? Let's look at the passage again. Woe unto you, man, woe unto you, woman, that desire the day of the Lord. To whom, to what end is it to you? The day of the Lord is darkness and not light. As if a man did flee from a lion, and a bear met him, or went into the house and lean his hand on the wall and a serpent beat him shall not the day of the Lord be darkness and not light evil very dark and no brightness in it it's time to repent I pity a lot of people. <laughs> people are trading away free gift of salvation and are giving heed to lies. I don't know how to convince people anymore. The place many people are going is too terrible. You, you don't know. People don't. They don't know. People have been so deceived to believe that God is so loving and that it doesn't matter how they live their lives. He's going to see them. But this is a lie. I know what I'm telling you, and I know that it will be too terrible. <laughs> but unfortunately, nobody can help you when it is too late. I know how I have suffered the consequences of disobedience, even though God is loving. I know. I don't know how to convince people. Because there are lots of deceivers out there. Can you just resolve to save your soul? Can you save your soul? Can you make the best use of this opportunity? The day of the Lord is darkness. It is not light at all. After now, I have no opportunity to preach again. I won't be able to talk to you again. This is the only time I have to warn people. Repent now. The day is coming. The Lord is coming. And it will be too terrible. Save yourself from the terror of the Lord. You need to save yourself now. 
judgment is coming. Evil is too much. We need to repent of our sins. I know I'm telling you, I, I don't know how to convince people, but that day will be too terrible. It will be too terrible. This is a time to change. <laughs> Don't let anybody deceive you. Don't let anybody deceive you. We know God is merciful, but the mercy of God has definition. There are conditions. Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. All I'm saying is, I'm not trying to threaten anybody. I'm not trying to frighten you. But I'm only telling you that you need to come out of that camp. That camp of the devil has been designated for destruction. And you need to come out of that camp now. Trouble is coming for everyone on that camp. And it's going to be an everlasting trouble. There is no second chance. There is no going back, man. Once you are dead, it is over. Why don't you call yourself to God? Now that you are alive, you have the chance. Remember the criminal on the cross. Remember he. He made it. The last chance. He never let it go. Look at Zephaniah. Zephaniah 1 15 to 18. The day is a day of wrath, a day of trouble and distress, a day of wastefulness and desolation, a day of darkness and gloominess, a day of clouds and thick darkness, a day of the trumpet. An alarm against the fenced cities and against the high towers. And I will bring distress upon men that they shall walk like blind men because they have sinned against the Lord and their blood shall be poured out as dust and their, bl- and their flesh as dung. Neither their silver nor their gold shall be able to deliver them in the day of the Lord's wrath. The whole land shall be devoured by the fire of his jealousy. For he shall make even a speedy readers of all them that dwell in the land. Go ahead and pile up silvers for yourself. Through unjust means. Or let your job consume all your time. And never think about eternal things. And never give a second to thinking about the place of eternity. But I tell you the truth. If you do not call yourself to order, it will be too late. I'm not saying you shouldn't work for money. I'm not saying it is bad to be rich, but the things you need to use shouldn't use you. Some of us have allowed ourselves to be used by the things of this world. Instead of us owning them, they are possessing us. The reverse should be the case. They shouldn't possess us. They shouldn't own us. They shouldn't use us. 2 Peter chapter 3 verse 10 But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night and the which the heaven shall pass away with a great noise and the elements shall melt with fervent heat the earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned Finally Revelation chapter 14 4 and 5. 
and I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people. This is a message to you today. Come out of her. If you have been called by the name of the Lord, please come out of her. Come out of her. Come out of the world. For her sins have reached unto heaven. And God had remembered her iniquities. Come out of her, my people. So that you will not partake of her plagues. So that you will not partake of her punishment. Come out of her. So that you will not be a part of the punishment. Come out of her. You humans, you people, come out of her. For her iniquities are great. And God has remembered her iniquities. Come out of her. This is not a time to follow the crowd. This is a time to sit down and hear the voice of the Lord calling. That if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, if you can just pray and seek his face and repent of your evil ways, he is saying, Come now, let us reason together. He doesn't care about the weight of your sins. Because the blood of Jesus is more than able to wash away every sin. This is a call for repentance. It is not judgment. It is not pronouncement of judgment. For you, that is alive. For me, that is alive. This is a call for repentance. It's my prayer that the Lord will draw us closer to Himself and change us for good. Let us pray. Lord, we are on a journey. We all are recruits. We have been recruited. We are making choices. We are taking sides. Either taking side with God or taking side with the devil because there was war in heaven before we were born. Two kingdoms are at war. And finally, the judge of the whole earth shall give recompense to every human, every fallen angel. Lord, help us to come out of fire. Help us not to take side with the devil. Those of you who have repented, I pray for you that the Lord will strengthen you. May God Almighty give you everything you need to make it in the name of Jesus. For those of you who haven't known the Lord, receive grace, receive strength. May the Lord God Almighty help you as you accept Him and repent of your sins today. As you invite him into your life today, may the grace of the Lord give you everything you need to make it to heaven. There's going to be a new heaven and a new earth, a new Jerusalem that will come down from heaven, prepared as a bride for her husband. Lord, help us to be partakers of that paradise. Thank you, Lord, for hearing our prayer. This moment, I pray for as many that are sick, as many that are having challenges. May the Lord God Almighty step into your situation in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for those who are supporting this ministry. May the Lord God Almighty support your life, replenish your purses, and help you to make it to that kingdom we are hoping to enter so that you can reap everything that you've sown. I pray for you that the canker worms will never touch whatsoever thing you do for a living, so long as it is legitimate. May the Lord bless your handwork. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen.
if you have not subscribed please subscribe to this channel and also share this video share it widely share it widely and the lord god almighty bless you in jesus christ's name if you want to contact me my details are on the screen you can contact me if you don't know the lord you want to give your life to christ and there is nobody around you please contact me and i'm going to pray with you and direct you on what to do that is exactly why i am here if you need counseling my details are on the screen you can visit our website twcfen.org or visit my personal website hosanna david.com uh, it's my prayer that God Almighty will help us all to make the kingdom this is my website osanadv.com and social media across social media Facebook Twitter Instagram uh, YouTube this is my social media handle Ozana at Ozana e. E. David. thank you and God bless you don't forget to share this video and don't forget to subscribe. See you next time. Bye-bye.